Praise the Lord. Good morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is a great joy and privilege once again to be here this morning to administer the word of God. I trust the Lord that everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation or world. We are living, my friends and beloved, in a very, very sick world. Hallelujah. But Jesus Christ said in his words, these things will happen in the last days. Wars and rumors of wars and so many different things. Earthquakes and famine and volcano and thunderstorm and earthquakes and uh, all this flood, flooding and so many different things. My friends, uh, we are living in the last days. But you might ask a question. What is the war with Ukraine? What is Russia has been doing? My friends, these things have been prophesied. We see that uh, what Russia is doing, and it's not only one war, but it's two war. Russia has already started the war with Ukraine, but it's preparing for the war, it's sending troops into Syria, preparing for the Israel war. So very soon we see two war. NATO has to be very careful, because what is happening in Ukraine now, I do not want to speculate, but I want to say something. Zelensky was a comedian, an actor. He acted the role of president, but one day he became a real president. We all know that the Soviet Union, and Ukraine was part of that in 1991 or whatever the case may be. And Russia is trying to regain its territory now. But we know that from Russia, they cannot strike America nor UK. But from within Ukraine, they can strike America and UK and also the 27 other countries of NATO. So just a warning, be careful. Things can spin around. I don't want to speculate. Things can spin around. Careful, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, let me pray this morning before I get into the word. Father God, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you thanks. I thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy and your great concern and the working of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Every spirit of witchcraft and obia and demonic forces and evil, I destroy under the precious blood. I cover myself under the precious blood this morning. I build a hedge around my life. I'm seen with the blood of Jesus. I'm marked with the blood of Jesus. And Jesus Christ said in his words, he says, No, I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of the world. He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side, at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee, and no plague shall come by thy way. My friends, this morning, the blood of Jesus is so efficacious, and the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is a repellent that destroys every yoke, and every bondage, and every fetter, and every evil, and every book of darkness. I thank you for complete victory. And I pray God as I minister your words this morning. That your words will go forth under the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And many will be healed. Many will be saved. Many will be blessed. Many will be delivered. Many will come to know thee as Lord God and Savior. Into thy hands I come in my life. And I come in thy words. I ask in the precious name of Jesus. This morning, my friends, I need, to, I need to continue. I want to speak a little more on the God and Magog war. Hallelujah. Praise God. My friends, this morning, hallelujah, I want to speak a little on the God and Magog war. We're living in terrible times. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to the wake up call this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome to the wake up call. My name is Ingrid Hamchan. I want to tell you something this morning. Where we are going to look, we are going to look at two wars. We see right now the earth and the believers. It is the setting of the stage, my friends. The setting of the stage, the next major prophetic event that will lead the world into the tribulation period. Now I, I do not know if the church will be here or not my friends it's important that we understand this morning what is happening and what we are able to uh, separate two key wars it's time for us as a people to be ready 
It's time for us to be a people that truly understand and discern the times and get into the secret place and really live out the Christian walk, my friends. So I just pray in the name of Jesus that this word will be such a word in a season that will minister life encouraging to you, enable you to see what's going on and see how God is in control. Because, my friend, the God who declares the end from the beginning, hallelujah, that you might know that he is, that he's faithful. And as you look and you see the prophetic word being fulfilled, it will store faith in you that you can trust him. He's a faithful God. He is a mighty God. He has everything under control. But he calls his people in this hour to pray, to seek his face. We are called to walk in love. So, Father, we just come and come and hold the whole come, Holy Spirit. Give us eyes and ears and let us have a hearing heart so that we are tuned with you, Father, soft, found in the secret place, supplying with you, having intimacy with you this morning. Hearing the word, receiving the word, and being doers of it. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, and I pray this morning, and the church say amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This word I've been trying to record this morning, actually, you need to, to understand people. Hallelujah. We need to understand what is happening. Normally, I don't have that many just being overwhelmed or so really pray, Father, this message is such a word to bless your people this morning. There are two wars and we, we got to, to understand and separate them because many people are getting concerned about what's going on with the Russian invasion of, of Ukraine. It is setting the stage, my friends, for what is about to happen. And it's, I'm going to show you, show that to you. We've got to understand there's more happening as the world is distracted rightly. So, by Ukraine. Iran, my friends, and now Iran, Russia, and China have been forming an alliance and bringing to begin to work together in the midst of this China has been talking to Korea, North Korea. So the potential, my friends, this morning for things escalating is there, I'm not saying there will be there in, in a potential Iran. It's trying to get uh, this nuclear deal. Now for some reason, my friends, the American took off of them the sanctions about to take the sanctions and to give them money despite the fact that Iran is sponsoring these terrorists in Yemen. They are attacking United Arabs, Emirates, Emirates. There is almost a war going on in the Middle East right now that we are here not hearing about. At the same time, Iran is sponsoring terrorism in Venezuela, our neighbor country. And more importantly for us right now, they are sending cargo ships. Hallelujah. U.S. plane and arms and weapons of all kinds of stuff into Syria. And they made it very clear, that's the Russian, of their plans. The Russian to attack Israel. Israel knows that their next war will be on the northern front. And they are preparing, my friends. But we are seeing the build up now. Up to now, Israel and Russia had an agreement so that Israel could send a, send a plane and in, send plane in and bomb certain places where they were stockpiling arms. That changed very recently in the last few days. Where Israel was told not to violate Syria in space. Hallelujah. However, my friends, this morning, in the last day, in the last day, Russia took another turn. Russia took another turn and it's very much 
sounding like uh, what we're hearing, what they said to Ukraine. They said to Israel, Hallelujah. They considered now the golden height uh, occupied. Now the golden heights uh, is that piece of land between Israel and Syria. That Israel claims to be theirs and Syria wants it back. And all of all of a sudden, Russia is making noise. Now, why is that important, my friends? Because of these two wars, hallelujah. We need to separate our, our Armageddon, out of Armageddon, and the coming Russian invasion of Gog and Magog. War, my friends, where Russia invades Israel. They are two separate events. And if you want to, to, if you want the Revelation chapter 16, verse 16, okay, it says, they gather them together to the place which is in the Hebrew called Armageddon. And of course, all, all, we all know this, the Armageddon war, the war is fought. I believe it's just south of Jerusalem, it's close to Jerusalem, very close to where Jesus was born and lived in as a child. He could see it. And it's uh, the nations, my friends, uh, come hallelujah this morning. It's interesting that it says uh, that these angels are sent forth uh, and the uh, effects uh, completely dry up. So the army from, uh, hallelujah, far east, the Chinese army and it uh, defines as it an army of 200 million men. There is no more other, there is no other nation that can bring such an army but China and it identifies where they're from and under that when they join, uh, join when John wrote my friends uh, about 200 million people the utter, he was saying there going to be a day where there's two hundred million from one part of the earth, the far east, and they're going to come. And when they come to the river Euphrates, instead of being hindered, the Euphrates River is going to dry up right now. Right now realize that that war was occurred at the end of tribulation period. So the tribulation period starts tomorrow. There are seven Jewish prophetic years before that happened. But right now the Euphrates River is beginning to dry up. Are you hearing me? I'm speaking very slow. So you can imagine where we got seven years to go. At least my friend, seven years left. Give them an indication how potentially close we are. These are major things occurring. Now we are told on the day that Jesus returns puts his foot on the templates uh, there in the Mount of Olives. There is such an earthquake in that hill breaks in two and a spring comes forth and that water, my friends, heals the Dead Sea and part of it uh, just, just found a spring and their time of to get pumps uh, to pull the water because it's causing problems. So God has already began to reveal certain things and demonstrate what he prophesied because God declares the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. So there, there this war fought in the valley of Megiddo where the Antichrist comes and the nations come. Hallelujah. Okay. All the nations come and the Antichrist is there and the Lord comes and they are torn to fight. The Lord, hallelujah. And the Lord wipes it out. Wipe them all, okay? Hallelujah. He just wipes out. So it's an attack against the Lord. It's all nation come to the valley of Megiddo. And the blood is up to the horse bridle. This is, this is going to be a very bloody, bloody war. This is millions upon millions. There are 200 million from one country, China. Now think about that this morning, my friends. So this war will be fought in the valley of Megiddo. 
That is uh, at the end of the tribulation period. It is uh, the final battle. It's the final battle of this, uh, of the tribulation period, okay? And then Jesus comes in and we enter into the millennium age. However, this morning, however, we need to now to talk and turn on this battle of Armageddon. Or of the Russian invasion, which is the Gog and Magog. But in saying that, a lot of people get confused. Because when they read the book of Revelation, we see the Gog and Magog war again. At the end of the triple, at the end of the millennium reign. So at the end of the thousand years, there once again is a Gog and Magog war. That is very different, my friends. Very different. That is, we are, we are talking about this because in that, in that Satan is finally released after a thousand years. And he raised up people from all over the earth. And they launch another attack against the Lord. And it finally brings everything to an end. Okay. So again, my friends, the cast of characters is... Who he, he who looking at now is to go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 38. So that this battle of Gog and Magog, Ezekiel 38, hallelujah, my friends, is limited. It, it was a certain set of characters. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ezekiel 38 and 39. It is a battle as we look. Look at it, just uh, get this, my friends. Uh, first of all, chapter 8, verse 38. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's, let's get back to Torsen. Torsen, as you do it, uh, you see that Israel goes through the valley of dry bones, talking about the first world war, talking about how they came out and they were just bones. But then God immediately rebirthed the nation of Israel in 1948. Then because a mighty army and they one of the most mighty army armies of the earth. And then you see as you close up and you go on that chapter. Previously, there were two kingdoms. But now they become born and they are born again. Again, okay, they won with one king over the one prime minister, not two kings. So we're living in this time period of the restoration of Israel. So now we're, we're at the point where God is starting to turn the page into Ezekiel 38. Hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man. He set your face towards God and of the land of Magog, the prince of the Rosh, Meshach, and to bow and, and prophesy against them. Prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against you. Oh, oh, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, I will turn you about. So, my friends, what we see here. Understanding here, he is dealing with a person, God, who is the leader of Russia. So right now, it's Putin, it's not so. And he is speaking and there he says something. I will turn you about. It's actually, in actual Hebrew, you read, it will be bring you back to where you were. What you were, and as we look, what happened, my friends? We went there. Russia was making a stand and saying, listen, we don't want Ukraine. And a NATO, we feel its challenges. We feel it challenges us. And so they stood against it now in 1995. America made an agreement. Where if Ukraine got rid of their weapons, we will defend them. And they wanted to get the needle. Okay, several of these former Soviet countries have gone to NATO. Something changed. 
So their putting says, we are not going to invade. We are going, we are doing, we are bringing all the armies in and we are going to invade. We are not going there just to do a military exercise. It's in Belarus. He lied, he lied in light of many things. And all of a sudden he invades and he goes into it. But it's a speech that he made to justify to his people and we find that he found he had a, a prepared script already done years or some time ago. And now he was going to do that. He knew, he knew the response, the battle as you read it. My friends, it requires that uh, it requires that the, the rich state that will have stopped in those nations that will have stopped him so go from being restrainers to protesters. Hallelujah. And my friends, uh, and Russia is embodied, embodied, and there is a leader there that's strongly behind him. That is very interesting. That in these two chapters. God separate out two people, Russia and the nation. And the leader, as we look at the other cast of the characters, it just points to the nation and talk about Iran. It, it will talk about other nations that some are not correctly translated. It talks about these uh, uh, pretexts uh, and, and also names, hallelujah, Chinese. They could potentially ch Chinese soldiers invade. So you have, the, by, by, by now these nations are in Syria right now. In Syria. So regarding Russia, it uh, separates. And right now, now right now the world is separating in these sanctions. Hallelujah. Putin, hallelujah. And the nations, my friends, hallelujah. And that is very interesting because that's not uh, typically how you do it. So they're going after Putin personally, who is one of the world's wealthiest men. And Russia, do you know that? Now this turn back, my friends, to that speech that he made. He turned back to a Soviet mindset. Calling that he wants to restore the Soviet Union. Hallelujah. As you look at the, at the armies and see the tanks, they are invading you and you will see that they, they don't all have Russian flags. But they have the Soviet Union flag and they have the Z on them. Pointing back to the Soviet Union days. The Z. Hallelujah. This is concerning because this means that this man is reckless. He has made statement regarding nuclear war and fighting nuclear weapons that he's okay. He is because he feels it will just be straight to heaven. We talk about the, the radiation. Hallelujah. My friends in Europe. We see right now the way they are treating that. The measurement of the radiation and the, the What's happening? Hallelujah! In this is a very dangerous level, my friends. This war could spark. This war could spark the torture, torture, and natural natural nation. If how the response? We are taking. We are talking about putting sanctions on them. Hallelujah! That's NATO going after them to make them feel pain. Understand this, my friends, that they are the major supply of gas through the Nord Stream pipeline, which goes through Ukraine. To Europe, Germany depends on this. Now, a few years ago, they began building a second pipeline, which will go basically down through the ballistic, down into the, the Nord, Nord Stream, Nord Stream 2. The pipeline right now, they are putting sanctions on. During Putin administration, he had put sanctions and stop it. Biden again, I'm not getting political. This is just speaking history. Biden reversed that and allowed it to reopen on the Trump. There was massive gas reserve found in Israel. 
Hallelujah. And he, with Israel, encouraged this pipeline, uh, the second pipeline, my friends. Uh, I should say that other sources of gas for Europe uh, to come from Israel. However, Biden stopped uh, that again, not uh, being political. I'm just telling you, historical, okay, hallelujah. But I want you to see right now, as many people now turn, say, look. We can go to Israel and get gas and reopen the that Israel could sell at a tenth the cost of Russia. So you're putting sanctions on Russia, feeling the pain, putting feeling the pain. He wants the pain on Europe. And so all of a sudden, my friends, there is one weakness. Hallelujah. To heal that is, my friends, Israel. Now, he probably never thought about attacking Israel. I don't know. But all of a sudden, you can see why. And he says when he goes into Israel, in Ezekiel 38, 39, in that uh, poster nation, he said, you go in for spoil. Now, let me share some of these things here this morning. Hallelujah. You may not be aware this morning that uh, the that's the semiconductors that are used in our cars and our phones and all our computers, all that are 35% of the program necessary for them, comes from Russia. Hallelujah. 90% of the neon, I didn't hear that, 90%, that inner gas comes from Ukraine. So my friends, we are about to feel the world about the fields of heart gas prices are about to go up every, very dramatically because why russia is a major gas supplier hallelujah and those gas i'm talking about petroleum right now hallelujah praise god goes into the big pool and we all buy from an america which used to be a gas supplier is now dependent we actually buy gas from, from guess who? You know that. Hallelujah. So it's actually, it helps Russia. They get better money for the gas. The major product that they export. And if there are sanctions put on all is so there in many ways that they do win, however, if they look at Israel and they take Israel, they gain a very dominant position in the Middle East. They have a warm water port. They have secured themselves and now they are in the dominant position against Europe. And particularly against America. Are you hearing me? What concerns me this morning is that as you read the prophetic word, is I don't see America mentioned often in the book of Revelation. No, and now America, of course, right when you think of the war, everybody looks at America. They are watching America respond to this Ukraine situation. Is that so? Okay. And the lack of the response that we are coming more of a poster with the sanctions. And they are not pulling the full sanctions on why that they surround aggressive. But it's very careful. Norms, because why you put super sanction on the, that hurt Russia really. Where we need to be hurt, we hurt it ourselves. Plus, uh, we might push uh, this uh, madman to do things uh, that are really going to hurt the whole world. He's threatened nuclear war. He's threatened it. Uh, and we touch them, my friends, uh, with great deal of concern. But you can understand Europe particularly where there are just uh, the energy so they got to be careful. They are a, a, a very uh, a tailored response. Hallelujah. So this one, my friends, uh, if you look at verse uh, 4 of 13, I will turn you about and put hooks in your mouth. So you know hooks means that there is something there. And there is something that is attractive. Something that really uh, appeals to him. That what we understand now is that we look at the invasion in Ukraine that appeals and he, he sees something in Israel. 
And right now, my friends, we know, of course, Iran is building up her weapons. Building up and ready to attack. They want to get a nuclear weapon. They began building those drones, Hezbollah and Lebanon. They have tried out, out those drones uh, during 